Hey everyone, what's up and welcome to Skillcap's 8.3 tier list for all things healer. This tier list has been put together with our group of rank 1 consultants and has been based around gladiator ratings and upwards. Since our last tier list there have been a lot of changes to the game including new essences, new trinkets, and everybody's favorite addition, Corruption. So we're going to be taking all the relevant healing classes and placing them into four separate tiers, with the weakest specs going into our C tier, working our way up to our strongest specs that will be placed into our S tier. But before we get into it, if you're new to the channel, be sure to like and subscribe if you want to show your support. Currently, 80% of you are not subscribed, which means that most of you are missing out on the awesome rank 1 fueled info that we drop regularly that will be sure to boost your rating in no time. So be sure to show some love and hit that subscribe button. And if you're interested in more content like this, along with gaining early access to all of our YouTube videos, exclusive matchup guides, access to our forums, and the opportunity to get your gameplay reviewed, be sure to head over to skillcap.com wow and sign up today. Throughout this video, we'll be making comparisons to our previous 8.3 list, which was produced before Corruption. We'll not only be giving you our reasoning behind these rankings, but also listing some compositions for each of these specs. Anyway, let's get started. Kicking things off straight away, we're going to be taking a look at our C tier. If this was built solely around 2v2, then this class definitely wouldn't be this low. I'm of course talking about Holy Priest. Holy Priest's major strength is their high impact greater heal, bringing insane single target healing even at the highest points of dampening, capable of keeping a target up through whatever damage they take. Not to mention their high amount of cooldowns, including Holy Ward, Guardian Spirit, Ray of Hope, and Greater Fade, which can make them incredibly obnoxious to play against, especially if you don't have a purge available. The fact that Holy Priest also brings a physical stun from Chastise is underrated, being in our opinion one of the strongest features especially when paired up with casters. So all this good stuff, and why is Holy Priest so low on our tier list? Well, Holy doesn't work in 3v3 due to its major design flaws. Holy Priest, if you've ever played one, relies on greater heal for almost 99% of their overall healing. Why this works in 2v2 is a lack of interrupts, in most cases you run out of ways to prevent greater heal and the priest recovers. Well, in 3v3, you have potentially double the amount of ways to stop greater heal and double the damage. Meanwhile, it's just never going to be viable in 3v3 until Holy Priest gets some healing outside of their long-winded greater heal cast. Holy can still partake in 3v3 in some niche double caster compositions, but against well-coordinated players, keeping your team alive as a Holy Priest in 3v3 becomes an uphill battle. And that's going to be it for our C tier. Jumping up to the B tier now, we've got Resto Druids. Resto was previously S tier in our last healer list, so what happened? Well, Resto Druids saw a very big nerf to their mastery healing, while the addition of Corruption also added a lot more damage to the game, which Druid struggles to heal through. Resto Druid has all the tools that make a great healer, having a low cooldown external in the form of Iron Bark, great mobility, and ways to avoid CC with their forms, and even some of the best crowd control thanks to Cyclone. Resto Druid even brings some high impact damage while in cat form, with the ability to restealth and consistently stun. Sadly though, these strengths don't make up for their inherent weaknesses right now, which is two factors. First is their mana efficiency. Druids simply have to spend so much more mana than any other healer to keep their team sustained, especially when dealing with high damage. Their healing can also be very lackluster if you don't have any charges of swift men or are unable to get a soul of the forest regrowth off, then your teammates can often just die through your heals. And that's before even mentioning the word purge. Druids struggle infinitely more than any other healer when classes can purge, as it results in you just simply not being able to heal. Composition-wise though, Druids still have a few decent options in 3v3. LSD, Double DH, and even RMD have seen some play, with the strongest being LSD. Alright, that's going to be it for our first two tiers. Moving up into our penultimate tier, which is our A tier, inside of which we're going to be adding our first healer, Restoration Shaman, moving up one tier from our previous list. Resto Shamans have gained some strength in the meta due to being one of the best self-sufficient healers. With the ability to use Pack Spirit combined with Earth Shield and the instant healing coming from Riptide and their totems, this means that they can pretty much survive by themselves without casting. The ability to kite and avoid slows while in Ghost Wolf also makes them very mobile and able to not only kite but heal passively while doing so, resulting in Resto Shamans becoming very strong when up against melee cleaves. This isn't their only forte though. Resto Shamans also do great into casters, having the most disruption out of any healer thanks to grounding and being the only healer with an interrupt. 
but despite how good they are at surviving themselves, shamans can struggle in compositions where they're required to heal consistently. Lacking any real form of instant healing, they rely heavily on Vitality Conduit, Earthen Wall Totem, and Spirit Link to recover in those sticky situations. Also, when compared to most other healers on this list, Resto Shamans don't bring too much offensively. They offer no damage, no real CC if the enemy team has a decurse, with their only form of aggression being their offensive purge. Because of this, Shamans excel in compositions like Windwalker Demon Hunter, with two very hard to kill melee, whilst also being decent healers for shadow play, adding some extra cooldowns to rotate through. Okay, we've now reached that point where we're at the highest tier possible. These healers going into our S tier are the best of the best, each of which bring their own unique strengths and weaknesses. Starting off, we've got Holy Paladins. Holy Paladins have moved up one tier since our last tier list, and this is solely down to the release of Corruption. Holy Paladins rely heavily on their cooldowns more than any other class not only to survive themselves, but to keep their team alive, keep their team out of CC, or even secure crowd control and deal damage themselves. Well, Corruption, namely Ineffable Truth, added a way to get these powerful cooldowns Paladins rely on back faster, and has helped them break into our S tier. Not to mention the interaction between Ineffable Truth and the talent Fist of Justice. Although, despite Paladins having all of these strong CDs on lower cooldown, this holds a lot of RNG. And they still have their standout weaknesses, primarily how susceptible they are to CC. But playing aggressive compositions like Rogue Mage Paladin help to mask over some of their weaknesses and secure Paladins our first spot in our S tier. Torpedoing into the S tier, we've also got Mistweaver Monks. Previously placed into our S tier, the recent nerfs to their cocoon were still not enough to bring this incredibly strong class down a tier. Mistweavers bring some of the highest passive healing thanks to their renewing mist paired up with counteract magic. Combine this with their insanely strong casted healing from Vivify and Enveloping means that they practically have it all. For cooldowns, Life Cocoon still acts as almost an immunity for whoever you use it on. Now nerfed to a 1 minute and 15 second cooldown, this is still insanely short for what it offers. Mistweavers honestly just have no weaknesses when it comes to healing. They do fantastic into dot cleaves thanks to tools like Vision Major, and they do great into setup compositions due to the low cooldown on Cocoon, and they do great into cleaves due to their mobility and throughput. The only real weakness that a Mistweaver suffers from is how susceptible they are to dying inside of stuns, combined with having no real way outside of their mobility to counter CC. Mistweavers also don't really offer that much offensively outside of their instant CC. But despite their lack of offensive prowess, they more than make up for it with how solid of a healer they are. At this point, you can put a Mistweaver in almost any composition and they will perform well. But their best is currently when paired up with the two best casters right now, Fire Mage and Destro Warlock. And finally, to round it out with our last addition to this tier list, we have Disc Priests. Discipline Priests are jumping up previously from our A tier up to our highest tier, and that's down to two things, Corruption and Essences. Disc Priests had two major weaknesses previously. These were their inability to easily recover and how susceptible they were to being trained down. Well, the addition of the Versatile Corruption helped with the latter tenfold. While the addition of Vitality Conduit plays into Disc Strengths incredibly well, sacrificing health, spreading the health between teammates, which will then be healed up via Atonement. Discipline's biggest strength has always been their offensive nature and the damage that they can bring to any composition with the addition of Dark Archangel and trinkets like the Forbidden Obsidian Claw only further adding to that strength. This means that they're the perfect match for any setup composition like RMP or Jungle, which just happens to be two of the strongest comps in the meta right now. This gives them their deserved spot at the peak of our tier list, which means that our final tier list ends up looking like this. Alright, that's going to be it for our up-to-date tier list for healers in patch 8.3. Remember, this list was produced with our rank 1 consultants, targeted for gladiator and upwards rating. Be sure to stay on the lookout for our caster and melee tier lists as well. We here at Skillcapped put a ton of work into keeping you updated on how to play and play around every class in WoW Arena. The best way for you to show your support and love for the channel, as well as remaining up to date on any shifts in the meta as they happen, is to like, subscribe, and share the video. Remember, the content that you find here on YouTube is just a taste of the hyper-improvement platform that you'll find on our website. If you're serious about improving your arena rating, be sure to check it out. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.